on the prickly line right now. And the heat is super, super hot <laughs> and stuffy. Off the train first, please. There are many cultural shocks in the UK. I'm going to provide a realistic picture of the UK, and this is only my opinion. But I'm going to give you some positives and negatives. When it's hot in London, you just want to go out and be about and enjoy the sunshine for as long as you possibly can. One of the best places to actually enjoy a hot summer's day is definitely Hyde Park because it is absolutely stunning. There's so much to see and so much to do and it's such a wonderful walk and just to relax in the sunshine and um, be sure to come here, uh, central London and it's one of the best parks in London by far. Wow, nature. There's just so much nature to see in the UK and even a place like London where you think, oh, it's just a concrete jungle. No, actually it isn't. There are so many parks, beautiful parks like Hyde Park, which I think is one of the most beautiful parks. These are public parks which are freely available to use, to enter. They are really, really beautiful. The nature is remarkable. You have places like Richmond Park as well, which is really breathtakingly beautiful. So there are many spaces throughout the UK uh, which you can enjoy, where you can enjoy nature. Of the air conditioned light, which is the metropolitan The transport system in the UK and in London especially is fantastic. The tube, which is underground train system, is brilliant. The overground trains within the UK is also just excellent. It's so easy to go from one place to the next. It is convenient. The transportation system is fantastic in the UK. The clock's changing. I found it to be such a bizarre concept. On the last Sunday of every March, every year, they change the clocks by one hour and this signifies the start of the British summer. This enables them to have an extra hour of daylight during the summertime. Do you think that most people in the UK sound like King Charles? They actually don't. And in fact, there are so many different accents in the UK. There are over 40 accents. They can sound completely completely different from each other. If you come here thinking that everybody sounds like the royal family, then you will be very surprised when you hear an accent that sounds nothing like the accent from the royal family. <laughs> this is actually really kind. In neighborhoods, uh, you'll have people who actually put out, for example, extra groceries if they have them. I've seen neighbors put out apples. I've even seen them put out toys that they're no longer using. And then people that pass by, if they want to take the apples or if they want to take the toy, they just pick it up and they just carry on walking. That's quite kind that people are very charitable in that way. There's a huge variety of food to choose from, especially in London. You can have Vietnamese food, right through to Italian food, to Indian food. It's also surprising because People do love Indian food. I remember when I first came over, I was working and they all said, let's go and grab a curry. And I was quite surprised because I didn't think that the British people do really like a good curry. That was a surprise to me. People like to have a fake tan. They like to be tanned. So they go and opt to have a fake tan. And there are many places that actually enable them to have a tan. Now I'm used to a beach that has sand, so a sandy beach. You'll be surprised to see beaches that have pebbles. So they have pebble beaches like the Brighton Beach, and then you also have sandy beaches like Folkestone in Kent has a sandy beach, and it also has a pebble beach. There are a variety of different types of beaches in the UK. And if you are going to a pebble beach, make sure that you wear the right type of shoes. <laughs> Self-checkouts at the supermarkets. So you have to go and purchase your groceries well, there will be numerous self-checkout places available within the supermarket for you to actually buy your items. This was quite different because I'm normally used to a place where you have a cashier and uh, where the cashier assists you and you pay the cashier and that is how the transaction operates. You'll also see numerous people cycling. They may be cycling for leisure or they'll even be cycling to work. And then often if they are cycling to work, they'll carry a change of clothes and then companies have a shower so they can shower as well and change into their change of clothes. Sometimes you will see the cyclist so close to the bus and you'll just think, oh my gosh, the cyclist is really close to the bus. But um, they cycle quite carefully 
and um, it's just a really good way of them to keep healthy. It depends on where you are. It's known that in the north people are more friendlier. In London, people don't necessarily greet each other if they don't know each other. Like if you're walking on the road, a person may not necessarily say hello to you. So strangers don't really interact even on the tube. They don't talk to each other. If the people are waiting for a bus, they don't talk to each other. In other countries, people do talk to each other if they're waiting for a bus or if they're in a lift together, strangers do chat to each other. So that was quite strange. So you also start work late. You can start work at nine or even 10 o'clock. And then obviously you finish much later, like at about quarter past five or half past five or so. So in South Africa, for example, you start work at eight and you finish at about four. So in the UK, you do start work later. If you are visiting London, know that London is very different from the rest of the UK. You know, London is extremely diverse. You have people from all over the world. You have many different languages being spoken. Whereas outside of London, it's really not that diverse at all. It feels a lot different from London. So understand that is quite different. Oh, you get to walk tons in the UK, especially like a place like London. You can spend a whole Saturday just walking throughout the city. So there's a lot of walking in the UK that's great for your health and your fitness. It does get super hot in the summertime. It really does. You could have temperatures of 37, 38 degrees in summertime and people are just boiling hot in summertime. Uh, some people find it unbearable, in fact. The summers are also very long, meaning that it can be eight o'clock at night and you still will have sunlight. Summertime is amazing and you have very long days, summer days. Women are really brave here, especially in the winter time because they'll be going out to the clubs and they won't be wearing much. And I just feel cold on their behalf, but it is amazing to see them brave the cold weather, even in the coldest times during winter. In London, there are many ice cream vans and you'll hear the song that the ice cream van plays. And you'll see many of these ice cream vans parked outside a primary school especially after the school ends, so that children will be asking their parents, oh, well, if Tom has an ice cream, why can't I get an ice cream? And the pressure is really on for parents, and these ice cream vans are everywhere. Primary school starts really early in the UK. It starts when kids are five years old, and you start high school when you're 11 years old, which also seems really early. The girls, they, they, can wear, they wear makeup in high school when they're going to school, which I found really strange. And if they have long hair like this, they don't necessarily put it in a ponytail or have it plaited, but they can leave their hair open like this for school, which is quite different from what I'm used to. Um, so that was quite strange. And Halloween is quite big in the UK. So you'll see kids going trick-or-treating and you'll see houses being decorated, which is rather, rather lovely to see the houses decorated or geared up for Halloween. So people tend to walk fast, especially in London. So if you're walking on a very busy road, be sure to keep up with the pace because people don't like it when people are walking slow and they are in their way. And even when you are going on an escalator, make sure to be on the correct side of the escalator. And people love to queue in the UK. So don't cut the queue, stand in the queue and move accordingly. You have to have car insurance in the UK. It is a legal requirement. Whereas like in South Africa, you don't have to have car insurance. It's an option. But I guess it is good to have car insurance because if you meet in an accident, then you know that you are insured and the person that you've met in an accident with is insured as well. So those are some of the positives. Now moving on to the negatives. Now to the negatives. Winter can be really harsh. In the evenings, it can get dark from three o'clock in the afternoons. That can be quite jarring to see the sun go away and darkness emerge as early as three o'clock in the afternoon. And sometimes you will see the sun is out, but it is icy cold. You'll also experience really temperamental weather. You'll have four seasons in one day. You'll think, oh, okay, it's sunny, it's clear, it's gonna be good weather today. And then the next thing you know, it's raining and it's really windy. Cost of living crisis. Now, this is serious. There are millions of people in the UK who go to a food bank and they are struggling to make ends meet because of the high cost of rentals, the high cost of purchasing a house 
and paying towards that house every month. They're struggling to feed their children. And this is a serious problem in the UK. Salaries have increased, but not substantially, in order to allow people to be able to budget properly. Because at the end of the day, the groceries are still so high, their bills are so high, so they're struggling to make ends meet. And this is a developed place, a developed country. And you often think that it is in developing countries where people face poverty at such a level. But it is happening in the UK right now. For many people, buying groceries, having enough money to buy groceries or going to a restaurant, these are luxuries for them in the UK. Another negative is the really narrow roads. There are very narrow roads in the UK, so sometimes uh, when your car is going, you'll have to stop to let the other car pass by because there isn't enough space for both cars to be on the road at the same time to pass by. Also, the, the houses and gardens can be very small, like an average house can be quite small. So space is limited, especially if you're living in a place like London. You won't, even if you wanted to buy a massive house, it would be very, very expensive to do so. So in many places, cash is not accepted. I remember going into London and then trying to pay with cash and they just said, sorry, we don't accept cash. You have to pay with your card. So I had to go from place to place to find a place where I, actually, where I could actually just pay with cash so that I could get something to eat. So many places are all about paying with card and even like certain restaurants, certain places where you want to buy fast food, etc. There isn't a cashier. You'd have to go to a digital screen and make your payment via that screen and then you collect your, your fast food and you leave the store. You also pay a bill called council tax and this is paid by the tenant and not the landlord. And it's a bill for picking up your rubbish, etc. The council is charges you this bill, this council tax bill. And I found that quite strange. And so that bill is not incurred by the landlord, but incurred by the tenant. Also, depending on where you live in the UK, like in London, neighbours don't talk that much. You wouldn't go and visit your neighbour's home very often. So they don't have that culture of come and see me whenever you want or if you are new to the neighbourhood that people invite you around to their home. Uh, so it is quite different in that regard. So do comment and let us know, have you ever travelled to a place and you experienced culture shocks? Let us know what they were or if you've been to the UK, what was surprising for you? And let us also know where you're watching from. Is it the UK? Is it America? Is it Australia? It's always interesting to know where people are watching from. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in learning more about YouTube or about being a YouTuber, please watch my next video, which is about YouTube. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.